Listen, let's be honest. Cold calling and talking to strangers when you've never done it before is really intimidating and kind of scary until you start doing it enough to where you get comfortable. And that's the point of these cold call breakdowns. I want to show you the best tools and tips that you can use right now so that you can feel more comfortable and confident when you're making your calls. Check this out. All right, we are back again with another cold call breakdown here, and this one's exciting. This is by Drew. Drew is the phone prospector, and he is with CallMotivatedSellers.com. CallMotivatedSellers is the company that I've used for the last four years. The, they're the absolute best of the best, the Rolls Royce when it comes to phone prospectors for finding discounted properties. And Drew here, you can tell, has talked to tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of property owners, and He's really smooth, he's really patient, he's asking the right questions, but the most important thing, remember this, the most important thing is get the four pillars. Every time you're having a conversation with a property owner and you're wondering, what should I be talking about? What should I be finding out to understand is this a deal or not a deal? It all comes down to the four pillars, which is the condition of the property, the timeline to sell that property, the motivation to sell that property, and the price. All right, these are the four things that he's trying to pull out. He's using the TTP script verbatim, and then he's going off script to try to pull in each one of those four pillars. So let's get this started. Jeffrey. I think you have the wrong number. Oh, actually, I'm looking for the owner. This is perfect. Whenever, don't let this throw you off. This throws, this threw me off when I was first starting and throws off a lot of people when they're making their first calls. When you call up and you say, hey, is Bill there? And they're like, no, there's no Bill there. And you're like, oh my gosh, uh, maybe I got the wrong number. I better hang up. No, 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 slow down. Just say, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm actually looking for the owner of the property at, and then say the address. He crushes it right here. That's me. Okay, uh, I don't know why I have Jeffrey here. Uh, what's your first name? My name is Terry. Got the first name, that's very important, right? He just went right at it. Oh, I'm sorry, who am I speaking with? What's your name? That's important, you need to understand what their name is because now you're gonna be taking all your notes, you're gonna be trying to figure out, you know, all the condition and timeline and motivation and price and then you won't remember what the name was. So he got it right away, what a pro. That's a pro move. Okay, I'm sorry. My name is Drew, um, and I just this call might be out of the blue, but I was calling about a property, um, like I said, I believe you own a 1510 West 12th Street. The list that he's calling on is one of my favorite. It is the Tired Multifamily List, all right? These are properties that were built before 1990. These are duplex, triplex, fourplexes, and they've been owned for at least seven years. So you're looking for older properties that have some wear and tear. You're looking the, for the for the owner to be tired of, of, of uh, either dealing with this property or they've gotten all of the benefits of ownership already out of it and they're just done with it. This is the tired multifamily list. I wanted to see if you would consider an offer on a property there, Joyce. Uh, possibly, yes. Possibly. That is the maybe answer. Remember, when you ask that question, would you consider an offer on your property? There's only six responses. Yes, no, maybe, right? That's that probably. How much will you give me? Who are you and how'd you get my number? That's it. Those are the six responses that you're gonna get. So as long as you understand how to respond to those six responses, you're gonna feel like the conversation is either moving forward or you're getting off the phone quickly to move on to a better qualified lead. Okay. Um, just to give you a little background, we, we purchase properties cash. Um, we pay off closing costs, but there's no real estate commissions, and we think the best part is that we buy them completely as is, so you don't have to put another cent into the property. So, you know, for an offer like that, what would you say? I really don't know. I... Benefits, 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 benefits. We're going to buy it cash. 
we buy it as is, there's no real estate fees, we pay all the closing costs for an offer like that, how much would you take, right? You're talking about all the benefits to them to see if early on in the conversation, they have a knee jerk uh, response to how much do you want for the property. Now, let me be honest with you, 95% of the time, they're not gonna give you a price. They're gonna either say, I don't know, or they're gonna say that you called me, or they're gonna say, how much would you give me? Somewhere along those lines right and that's exactly what he got here watch how drew the pro really handles this what are you offering okay well um conditions plays a large role in building an effort offer for you can you tell verbatim this is exactly what we've been teaching for four years the condition is really important so if you're talking about the condition of the property, first of all, it takes out the emotion, typically, of, of what the, the property owner's feeling. It's not about them and then what's going on in their mind or in their situation. It, it has everything to do with just the physical condition of the property. And the longer that they talk, the more open that they're gonna be to giving you the timeline, motivation, and the price. Let's see how he does. Tell me uh, just a little history of what you've done, say, remodeling in the past, past five years, just say, your kitchen and bathroom. Uh, I just got to do the regular basic upkeep, you know, new flooring if they need it, so oh, okay. things of that nature. Right. Uh, uh, otherwise, nothing. nothing yeah. No. Okay. Perfect. She's had this rental. She's owned it for a while. She hasn't done any major upgrades. These are all things that you should be, these are like light bulbs going off in my head. Right now, they should be going off in your head too if you were on this conversation. And I'm sure it's going off in Drew's head. He's like, okay, she hasn't done much to the property. She's being kind of vague right here. I'm going to have to dig in a little bit to try to get a little bit more information out and watch how he does this. Um, and the bathroom is well not major. Right. Okay. Um, now this is a rental, correct? Right. Okay. And do you have tenants in there currently? Yes. I didn't know, like a long term lease or is it monthly? This is great. Now he's getting into the specifics. What is going on? What are the business elements of this property? Are they paying rent? Are they in a long-term lease? Have they been there for a while? Listen, the longer a tenant has been in a property, the more wear and tear that property is going to have and the le and, and and a smaller amount of upgrades it's going to have. So in his mind, he's building, okay, I've got this duplex that they've owned for a really long time. It hasn't been updated in all these years. There's potential profit here. There's potential equity in here if he can get it at the right price. Month to month. Um, okay. And is it good usually to Usually, I, I have had right. them stay. I have had my tenants stay usually quite a number of years. Okay. And is it good business for you, generally? Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Watch how he's trying to pull the motivation here. This is beautiful. I love this. Okay. Um, you local, are, you man, are you local or manager yourself? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, say, say you were to sell. I mean, if it's a good business, if things are working out well for you, guys, then why would you consider an offer? I mean, because I'm 84 years old. That, what a great question. If, if, it's, if it's a good rental for you, why would you sell it? Well, I'm 84 years old. Watch this little charmer right here. Watch, her, watch this. Okay. Well, that's... You sound a lot younger, but that's a pretty good reason. You sound a lot younger. You know, watch it. She's like, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you don't want to If you can get someone to laugh on the phone, I am telling you that force field gets thinner and thinner and thinner of them putting up their wall, protecting themselves. Just little things like that, you gotta follow up. Little little things like that, you've gotta throw in to get that laugh out of them, to get them to just, you know, understand that they're just communicating with a neighbor. They're just communicating with a human. They're just, they were, you were having a real conversation here. This isn't just a throwaway conversation that you're like, oh, I'm gonna just give you kind of like surface answers and keep you at arm's length. No, she's like, okay, now I'm gonna be more comfortable and, and explain what's going on here and, and, and give the timeline and we'll see if we can get the price. I didn't get any more. Um, 
Do you know how old your roof is there? No, I really don't. Um, we did have that windstorm. See, this is one critique that I would say. He's going back to condition. He's going back to condition, going back to condition to, to, to pull out, to lengthen this conversation so that he can get the other two. Now, he's got the condition of the property. He knows that it's been, it, it's in rental condition, but it hasn't been upgraded in years. He knows that her the motivation is, she's 84 years old, right? Maybe she just doesn't want to deal with it anymore. Uh, maybe she's, she's tired of going over there. Uh, maybe it's just time to cash out and, and and think about putting that money somewhere else. Who knows? Uh, now he needs to get the timeline and the price. Uh, oh, yeah. Coming with the yeah. Uh, yeah. And the uh, insurance adjuster said that there was no damage done to the roof. Well, that's good. Um, how about your heating unit? Do you hear the active listening? Oh, that's good. Uh huh. Okay, sure. That is so critical. That sets amateurs uh, apart from professionals or professionals apart from amateurs. For real, is the active listening. Uh-huh, sure. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, good. That Those type of things make it so that it's not an interrogation, it's a conversation. Make sure that you're actively listening all the time. I have two heating units, one for the each of the places. Okay. And it's an up and down. Okay, it's a duplex, correct? Right. Okay. And I have it listed as a four bedroom, 2.75 bath, 2,300 square feet. Does that sound right? I understand what Drew's doing here. He wants to provide because we we work with call motivated sellers. We've been working with them for years and they want to get as much detail about the properties as possible. So he's getting in there and he's just confirming some of the things that he's seeing from Zillow. Because when you're making calls, especially if you're using batch dialer, which I highly suggest that you do, when you're making calls, you can push a button and go straight to Zillow so you can see the size of it and how many beds and baths. It's not always perfect, but they do a pretty good job. All right, there's, uh, like I say, there's up and down. There's two two bedrooms uh, in each unit. Large living room, large kitchen. And by large living room, I'm talking probably 15 by 30. Oh, wow. That is large. Nice. Yeah, the, the, those rooms are quite large. Okay. Yeah, I can see by the picture I'm looking at, um, it looks like a, a fairly big, a good sized house. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, so let's say, Joy said, I make an offer that makes you happy and works for both of us. Um, when do you see yourself selling? Well, I don't know. Whenever. For the timeline, we got two more to knock down here. He's got the condition. He's got the motivation. Now he's going for timeline. He's about to get it. Can he get the? Price? Well, I don't know. Whenever I get a decent, uh, what I think is a decent offer. Oh, and there it is. Everything's going his way. Drew's feeling like he's sprinting. He's going. He's like feeling like he's out ahead of everybody. He's doing this. This is gonna be a deal. Yes. And then she hits him with. With the, as soon as I get an offer, decent offer that I uh, that I think is decent, right? And so right here, where where Drew uh, makes a mistake is he doesn't pull out what she thinks is a decent offer. He tries a little bit, but you can be a little bit more to the point here. Okay, great. I don't want to waste any of your time. What have you have you received any other offers that you rejected? Yes, no, yes, I've had some. Okay, what is too low for this house? Ask that, ask that. What is, what is, what is a too low price for this house? And, and see what, how they respond. Okay, well, that makes sense. I mean, say, say if I, we, we gave you a decent offer tomorrow, do you think you could sell within the next three months? Mm, probably. Okay. I would I mean, have to totally make asking. sure what was going on with my tenants and everything. Sure, of course. You know, and then you're, you're in that as a rental and keep the rental for if you're right. going to. And if, if we have been known to honor leases, if, if they needed more time, 
um, to, to get your affairs. Benefits, benefits, benefits. Obviously, he's hearing that she cares about her tenants, which is excellent. He's saying, listen, we'll have good conversation with them. We're not going to put anybody out in the street. So that gets rid of that objection. So really, all he needs to know is what is a decent offer? What is an offer that's acceptable to this property owner? We've been known to do that, so that's not. I mean, we, don't, we certainly want, don't want to displace anybody. Um, now, and by the way, she's about to get a phone call that she goes on for about thirty seconds. So we'll skip through that. But she actually, I don't know how many phones uh, this woman has, but she's got more than more than one, at least two. Considering that we buy it as is and, and there's no closing costs, we don't have to deal with any of the real estate conditions. Um, uh, for a tax offer like that, what would you say? Well, just a minute. Can you leave the page? Hold on a minute. Okay. All right. I'll mark it down. Mm -hmm. oh, all right. Bye. I'm sorry. No problem. You sound like a busy one for 84, George. <laughs> I try to be busy. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Um, so, um, yeah, like we were saying, uh, it, it, you don't have to deal with any of the real estate fees or, or closing costs. Uh, Picks up right where you left off. Picks up right where you left off. You know, no out of pocket money at a point of sale. What, what would you think? You know, what would be a good price for you? Is there something you could come up with right now? Um, I really couldn't come up with anything right now. That's okay. That's okay. Um, so if this were me, if this was my call, because this is pretty much uh, the end of the call, they just get off here. He's just getting a time for the actual owner of the company, the wholesaler that's in town to reach out uh, to this property owner tomorrow to try to get a price and see if, uh, if it's a reasonable price that they can offer. So a lot of times the phone prospectors get to that point and they don't want to push it too far so then they won't go and really push for the, for the price here. What I would do here probably just depending because she's not really giving me anything. She's, she's kind of like one foot in, one foot out. She's not really, uh, it doesn't sound like she's incredibly motivated. This sounds like it could tip to the scales of this would just be a convenience for her to sell it, which that's not how you get deals. You get deals when there's a problem that a cash as is offer can solve. So I would throw out something right now. I would pull up Zillow and if Zillow were above 250,000 on this property, I would say, you know, I'm just looking around and it looks like I'm on my computer right now and it looks like um, uh, neighbors in similar condition to your property are selling for, and I would say 66%. If it's at, uh, between 250,000 and 100,000 on Zillow, I would say 50%. And if it was below 100,000, I would say 25%. And I would just say, hey, listen, uh, your neighbors in similar condition are selling for around this price. Is that what you were thinking? Not that you're committing to it, but it's gonna pull some more information out. I feel like there's some really good, some really good signs that she would wants to sell this property and sell it as is, but what's the expectations right is this a convenience or does she have a problem but her being 84 she's she's active she's doing things I mean it doesn't sound like she's exhausted doesn't sound there's nothing to show me here that there's any motivation at all so I'm gonna throw something out because she's not gonna give me a price. I'm gonna throw something out and see if it's reasonable and see if she has a counter offer to that offer to see if we're even close. Because what happens is it's a slippery slope. Once we get this lead in, we've got all this information. We're like, oh my gosh, this sounds amazing. And then you get on the phone and you can't get anywhere or they don't pick up. And then all of a sudden they're in your lead follow up and you're trying to get a hold of them all the time, but you can't, but you think it's a hot lead, but it's really not a hot lead. And you're wasting time that you should be investing in somebody that's going to actually have the potential to do business with you. So I love throwing it out there in these situations to just get an idea, get a baseline of what the price is because you've got the condition, you've got the timeline, you've got the motivation kind of what's the price I'm gonna throw out a price because I don't think that she is truly motivated I think that she's this is gonna be a convenience thing and I want to know right away so that I'm not clogging up my lead pipeline with leads that won't ever do business at the prices that I need to do business 
So that's it. That is the that is the cold call breakdown. Listen, you can do this. You can get on the phone. You can have quality conversations. Use the TTP script to open up for the scaffolding, the skeleton of the conversation, and then everything else wraps in to the four pillars of pre-qual: condition, timeline, motivation, price. You got this. You're the best. Love you. See ya.